Here, we'll look at the example of the work done when pulling an object up a frictionless incline. A girl pulls a sleigh of mass 4.81 kilograms up a hill inclined at 12.7 degrees to the horizontal. The vertical height of the hill is 27.3 meters. Neglecting friction between the sleigh and the snow, determine how much work the girl must do on the sleigh to pull it at a constant velocity up the hill. So we've got an incline shown here, and we're given that the angle, theta here, is a 12.7 degrees. The vertical height of the hill, so this distance here, is our height. This is going to be 27.3 meters. We're going to pull it up this hill, and we're told that we can neglect friction, and that we're pulling it at a constant velocity. Constant velocity means no net force, so all the forces are balancing out. But that doesn't mean that the girl isn't doing work. She's applying a force in order to pull it at the constant velocity, overcoming the force due to gravity. We're going to tilt our axes so that they match our incline plane. And that means if we're swinging this one upward, we're swinging this one over by theta. We've got a force due to gravity acting downward here. And so we've got a component along the negative y-axis that is going to be equal to an fg cos theta. And we've got a component along the negative x-axis, which is going to be an fg sine theta. And I'll show that one again up here. So that's our fg sine theta. We've also got a normal force, and that's going to be balancing this fg cos theta, something like that. So this is fn, our normal force acting along the positive y-axis. Lastly, we've got the pulling force of the person or the girl pulling the sleigh up the incline. And it's at a constant velocity, and so I expect that to be balancing the fg sine theta component. So I'm going to draw it about that same scale of magnitude. That's our force, fp, for the person pulling the sleigh. The other thing, now that we're dealing with work, the other vector I want to denote is the displacement. And so here we're moving this sleigh all the way up the hill to the top of the hill. And so this is going to be our displacement here at delta x. And I'll notice that the angle between the fp, the pulling force, and the delta x is a phi equal to zero degrees. In order to determine the work done by the girl, I need to determine that vector fp. Well, what do I know about fp? So if I look at the sum of my x components of my forces, it tells me that fp and a negative fg sine theta is going to be giving me my acceleration as I always denote it, so I use Newton's second law. But then I acknowledge that there's actually zero acceleration here. It's a constant velocity. And I'll make a correction. I should have outright put that here as a negative fg sine theta and a negative fg cos theta. This means now that I can solve for f, and so it's just the equivalent of mg sine theta. So I've got 4.81 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared, and a sine of 12.7, which all gives me 10.36 newtons. So we want to find the work for a pulling force and this displacement delta x, where the angle between them, phi, is equal to zero. We need to know what delta x is. Sine of theta is equal to h over delta x, so our opposite over hypotenuse. And that means then that we can solve for a delta x being just an h over sine theta. Work then for that person or the girl pulling the sleigh is going to be that force, fp, times the delta x, times cos of phi. Thus we have an mg sine theta, an h over sine theta, and a cos of phi. Notice now that my sine of phi will cancel, and I'm left with mgh cos phi. And this cos of phi is equal to 1. I'm left with 1,286.8 joules, or 1.29 times 10 to the 3 joules, if I follow the three significant digits used in the other numbers. Let's take inventory. We're told that it's constant velocity, so we balanced out the pulling force and the, y, the x component of the force of gravity. 
to have a zero acceleration and therefore that gave us our pulling force of 10.36 newtons. We presume that the pulling force was along the incline and not at an angle and that force then gave us a work due to that pulling force, the displacement delta x and a presuming a cos of phi equal to 1 for a phi equal to corresponding to a phi equal to 0. We plug that all in and we get the work of 1.29 kilojoules. It's positive and we expect that because the force and the displacement are aligned. We're doing positive work to work against gravity. One of the other things that you might have noticed here is that I cancelled out the sine thetas when I was calculating the work. And that means that the answer there is independent of theta. It's independent of the slope of the hill. It means that the work I have to put in doesn't depend upon how steep the hill is. It didn't matter whether it was a long, shallow incline or a short, steep incline. I did the same amount of work either way. But that's true here because there was no friction. If we had friction, then the path that we take, whether it's a long path or a short path, would make a difference because it would determine how much work we're doing against friction. But in this case, with a frictionless incline, the answer, the amount of work, is independent of theta.